All right, good to be back here to West 56th Street, the Indiana Farm Bureau. Good work today with the players. Really a uh, good walkthrough. I uh, had a little run, team run out there, a little walkthrough. Um, guys were dialed in, got some good work today. Um, you know, excited to, uh, you know, it's two weeks from today. Two weeks from today is our home opener. So I hope Colts fans are getting excited about that. I know we are as a team. So all eyes are on Seattle and getting ready for that. Obviously, the next couple of days are hard days having to make some roster cuts and forming this team and practice squad. So um, we'll be working on those uh, decisions in the next 24, 48 hours. Um, just a couple injury notes. Um, obviously, most of you probably saw the good news that we got on Sam Ellinger, that it was only a sprain and uh, not worse. So we're very happy about that. Very, very happy about that as a team. Very happy about that for Sam. So uh, it won't be season ending. You won't need surgery. So. Uh, happy for Sam. Um, unfortunately, the other Sam, Sam Tevy, did suffer an ACL, MCL tear. Um, that is going to require surgery, which will end his season. Um, Sam was having a really good camp, um, was very competitive and, and a great teammate. So we know he'll bounce back and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I know he'll go uh, through the rehab process like the pro that he is. And then obviously, lastly, on, on TY, um, you know, he's being evaluated for a neck injury. Um, he was experiencing he was experiencing some discomfort during the trip to Detroit, so we took scans. Uh, they got scans done. It was a disc issue, um, so you know that that's a complicated issue. So there's more meetings, more evaluation to come, more opinions to come. You know, obviously want to do our due diligence there. We got all the right people on it, and um, you know we'll just continue to meet with the doctors or take you know work with their cue and. And move forward accordingly. It, it will. He will miss some games. We don't know exactly how many. Uh, we're optimistic it's not season ending. So um, we don't know exactly how many games. So I'll open it up. Joe Erickson. Frank, did did Ty get injured on that play we saw in practice, where the deep ball that he went down and trainers had to look at him for a little bit and then he came back? I think that reaggravated it, Joel. But it was he. He had felt it before then. Stephen Holder. Hey, Frank, um, you you have some real difficult uh, machinations here, you know, with the the roster cuts, just because you you have some key players that are down. I know that always happens, but but is this a, a particularly unique situation? Just because there's so much you don't know. Um, I mean, in some ways, it's unique, but. I think we'll handle it the right way. You know, we feel really good. As you guys know, we feel really good about this roster. Everybody matters, right? First first and foremost, we want to make sure we we get the right diagnosis and the right process in place for the guys that are injured to get them back as soon as possible. When you're talking about a guy like T.Y. Hilton, I mean, you know, him missing games, all right, that's an obvious big blow because he's not only a great player, um, but he's a great leader. Um, he'll still be a great leader on this team even if he misses games because that's just who he is. But it's just unfortunate. I, I had said several times to Chris, I really thought T.Y. was looking as good this training camp as I've seen him. Um, he looked as fast as ever um, and just as instinctive as ever. And even in the short time that he and Carson worked together, I, I could tell instant connection. And I could feel that talking to Carson. Like, you know, So that's unfortunate. But the good news is we got good depth and the guys will step up. Mike Chapel. Frank, is the expectation that Carson will be in team as soon as you guys are out there? Yes. And, he, and he's, again, no setbacks. He's full go as much as you know he's full go. Yeah, and we structured this week, chap, so that, you know, tomorrow we'll have a normal practice. He'll be in team, period. We got to see how he responds to going one day a team. And then the next day will be a walkthrough. So kind of kind of give him a chance to, he and Quentin, a chance to kind of have a day there. Um, and then, and then we got two days about, you know, then we got a day in pads on Wednesday and then another shorter practice on Thursday. So this will be a big week to determine where those two guys are. Um, but they, you know, they will be in team and I, you know, we'll see if they're limited or not, or if they're full go for every rep or, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes during practice. Thank you. Coach, if I don't, if I can interrupt, Quentin will be back. Is, is he off the COVID list already? Or is that just a plan for when he's back? I believe it's, I believe it's tomorrow. I believe tomorrow is his first day back. All right, Greg Doyle. 
I was going to ask that one too. Thank you, Zach. Um, so how do you know yet? Can you know yet based on them being away a couple of days, um, him and Eric Fisher, what they look like for the opener? Is it too soon to say about either? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's too soon with Eric. Um, you know, I just think it's too soon. I mean, I think his, I mean, it's a, it's a stinking shame because man, I really, you know, I mean, I really think he was tracking. I really think he was tracking. So, um, I think he's doing really well. I think this is a, I think this is a little blip, a little bump in the road for him, not for his recovery, but just as far as timetable, you know, just as far as timetable, but you never know. So we're going to keep everything. We're going to keep every option open, but just logically speaking, you have to say that this is a little bit of a bump in the road, just as far as timing, but he's still continuing to, you know, he's at a good spot physically though, as far as his Achilles is concerned. But Quentin, you're, you're you're not mentioning him at all. Sounds like you kind of expect him to go, Seattle. Well, I'm expecting that he's going to push it this week, and and um, and then we're going to see how he respond, see how it responds, and see if he can take the three days of practice that we're going to have um, this week. And yeah, and I expect that if he can handle that, I expect that he'll go. Uh, and you know, but then again, we'll you know, because part of the uh, the litmus test, Greg, was you know. With Quentin and Carson in particular, it was like, hey, they, they need to be, you know, as Chris and I talked about this, they need to be ready to go Wednesday, like the game is being played on Wednesday, so they can practice full on Wednesday, practice full on Thursday. So in order to get there for Wednesday and Thursday, that means they're going to have to do some work this week. They're going to have to prove that they can bounce back from a, a good day's work and follow it up with another day. So we'll see how this week goes. All right, last one. I have two, just one quick one on, on Taekwon Lewis and just uh, how's he doing in terms of recovering from an injury? It's, it's just been slower than we wanted, you know, but it's been slower than we wanted. Um, so we're still, you know, working at it day by day. He's working at it day by day, but kind of the nature of things is it's just, it's, it's one of those deals that you just can't rush it. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll just keep hoping the best. Is week one is in, in jeopardy, I guess, or he might not play week one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not ready to say that. I mean, okay. we're not ready to say that yet, but um, yes. And then my other question is just about, about Jacob Eason. Now I assume, you know, he's the backup quarterback. How comfortable do you feel going into the season with him as your backup quarterback? Yeah. I mean, I think Jacob has earned that spot. I think he's done a nice job. Um, really happy with his progress um, and, and happy for him. Jacob's handled himself like a pro. Um, you know, I think his bright spots have really been, you know, throwing the ball down the field, you know, making some, you know, nice chunk plays down the field. And I think he's, I think the other bright spot for Jacob was that it wasn't too big for him, you know, that, that he got in there and, and, you know, looked like it looked comfortable, um, looked like he belonged. Um, we expected that, but you never know until you actually get in there. So, um, and, and I think he's earned the trust uh, and respect of the team.